Hello again. As most viewers of this channel will know, I do not moderate comments or delete them or block people. One consequence of this is that many people with anti-Semitic views hang out in the comments because they know they can get away with saying stuff here which would get them turfed off most other YouTube channels. These people give us an excellent insight into the nature of modern anti-Semitism and I thought that it might be interesting to do a couple of videos on this subject. First though, we need to clear the ground and ask ourselves what anti-Semitism actually is. It's an odd word which was devised by a German in the late 1870s. One of the things which people might notice about those who have a problem with Jews is that they can very seldom bring themselves to use the word Jew. Instead, they prefer to use various euphemisms, talking of the chosen people, for example. In the modern world, we hear people referring to Zionists or Zios, not in the sense of those who are supporters of the political theories of Theodor Herzl or Chaim Weizmann, but rather as a synonym for Jews. This has caused some misunderstanding and confusion here when I've tried to talk about Zionism, because many anti-Semites don't have a clue what is actually meant by the word, <laughs> even though they're regularly talking about Zionists. In comments here, people continue this weird tradition of avoiding the word Jew by talking about the small hats or the Jays. This practice among people who do not like Jews began with a German called Wilhelm Ma in the 1870s. He wrote a book published in 1879 called The Victory of the Jewish Spirit over the Germanic Spirit, observed from a non-religious perspective. In his book, he used a word which he had invented, sematismus, which he used as a collective noun to denote Jews. He did so to avoid saying Judentum, or Jews, in German. In the same year, he founded a group which he called the Antisemitenliga, or Antisemitic League. This is the origin of the English word antisemitism. It relates only to Jews, and not to other Semitic people, such as Arabs and so on. There was, of course, a perfectly proper German expression at that time for this kind of thing, Judenhass, or Jew hatred, but anti-Semitan sounded more respectable and scientific. Until the 19th century, dislike of or hatred for Jews had been based primarily upon religious reasons that the Jews had supposedly killed Christ. People like Ma, though, felt that there were even better reasons for hating Jews. He claimed that they were a very real danger to the German nation and that a struggle was taking place between the German spirit and that of the Jews for the soul of the nation. Sound familiar? This then was the very root of modern anti-Semitism. It emerged at a time in Europe where the pervading spirit was for ethno-nationalism, that is to say nation-states where all the citizens had a similar culture and ethnicity. So in Italy, for instance, the average person was fairly short, dark-skinned, brown-eyed, black-haired, a member of the Catholic Church and spoke Italian. In Germany, on the other hand, people tended to be a bit taller than the Italians, fair-skinned, blue-eyed, speaking German, and belonging to the Lutheran Church, a branch of Protestantism. In short, nationality and ethnicity were combined to make a nation. In Victorian times, it was common to talk of the English race. Obviously, Jews would not fit into this simple scheme. If a country in Northern Europe was full of tall, blonde, blue-eyed people who went to church on Sundays, then a Jew would automatically be an outsider. This is the root, the very foundation of modern anti-Semitism. Not the Jew as Christ-killer, the man whose ancestors slayed our God, but the Jew as outsider, different from the others who make up the nation-state. 
Wilhelm Marl also put forth the idea that Jews were taking control of German industry and financial institutions such as banks, which is, of course, another of the ideas which we see people advancing in the comments on this channel. Then, too, there was a suggestion that Jews were putting forward dangerous ideas and that the safest course would be to chuck them out of the country entirely. This, too, is a view we see expressed here regularly. I think that this is enough for the time being. We've looked at the origin of the word anti-Semitism and seen that 140 years ago, some of the ideas about Jews which are current today had already been developed and were being spoken of by those who did not like Jews. We observe too the desire to avoid calling them Jews, but instead to substitute other words for them. A very noticeable theme in some comments on this channel. Tomorrow we should look at the way that these basic ideas have evolved into modern anti-Semitism, which has of course been turbocharged by the growth of the internet.